for, for metastatic um, pulmonary adenocarcinoma, first-line therapy, there is a couple of choices. First of all, the experience has, has taught us that it, it's best to use a true drug combination, and one of the two drugs should be a platinum compound, cisplatin or carboplatin. Now, the second drug should be a third-generation chemo compound, and that could be one of several, gemcitabine, venerelbin, pemetrexid, or docetaxel. Uh, even carbota even um, uh, paclitaxel can be used, and uh, a, second, a third drug can sometimes be added uh, as a biological agent, for example, bevacizumab. So bevacizumab in combination uh, is also a, a, a something that has been used frequently, mostly in combination with carboplatin paclitaxel. So most of the data we have is on that combination. I don't think we can say that any particular combination is better than the rest. Uh, but a meta-analysis has shown that cisplatin is uh, slightly more effective. It gives slightly better overall survival, but at a price of added toxicity. And perhaps pemetrexid is slightly better than the other third-generation compounds, also with respect to uh, overall survival. Guidelines for chemotherapy uh, is quite simple because they say that it should be a duplet, a two-drug combination with a platinum compound and a third-generation chemo agent. When I give my patients with advanced lung cancer chemotherapy, I have some assumption what I can expect from efficacy and in particular from response rate. And this is differentiated according to the histology of the tumor. So we may expect a little bit more response in patients with non-squamous histology compared to the patients with squamous cell histology. So roughly, the response rate that I would expect in one patient with a metastatic non-small cell lung cancer uh, would be in the range of 30 to 35 percent as a response rate. And furthermore, I would expect something like a tumor control rate in the range of 50 to 55 percent of my patients. When we expect the response, of course, we also would like to see duration of response. We want to see durable responses. In reality, the median progression-free survival that we have observed in the trials is in the range between six to seven months, and the duration of response is more or less in the same time of months that we may expect in our patients. The role of bevacizumab in patients without driving mutations in non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer is controversial. Bevacizumab is certainly licensed uh, for use together with platinum doublet chemotherapy in non-squamous tumors because it was developed in patients with non-squamous tumors with early toxicities identified in the development program in patients with squamous tumors. We have data from two large trials which demonstrated a survival advantage in combination with carboplatin and paclitaxel. So therefore, bevacizumab is usually given in combination with carbo and taxol. There is modest evidence of benefit in terms of modest benefits in response rates and progression-free survival in combination with cisplatin and gemcitabine, although that didn't really translate to a survival benefit per se. Nevertheless, meta-analyses and phase four analyses have demonstrated good outcomes in terms of overall survival when combining uh, bevacizumab with other platinum uh, backbone uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy compounds and it indeed it is licensed both by the FDA and EMA for use with other cytotoxic third generation compounds including pemetrexid. Although there's never been any head-to-head -head trial of bevacizumab with or without its use in a uh, platinum pemetrexid uh, backbone uh, based study.